we are. Oh, oh. Hey guys. Um, so, Howdy. as you can tell, we're a little bit smaller today. Um, Brent is off writing songs with his friends, um, having a good time, and Chris uh, is sick this week. So, yeah, uh, just prayers for him and that he gets better. He did come and visit us earlier, but uh, is definitely not feeling his best. So, yeah, no, his voice is hoarse. He's yeah. like, no way he yeah. can sing in that state. So, yeah. So, anyway, um, we are in the book of Colossians, continuing. Uh, we're starting, well, we actually started four last week, but we're, we're in four. Colossians 4, 2 through 4 is what we decided, right? Yeah, yep. So that's where we'll be today. I'll go ahead and read it out of the NIV, and then uh, we can just go boom, boom, boom. Sound good? Sounds great. Okay, yeah. so NIV says this, uh, starting in 2. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for, you, for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Mm -hmm. Pray that I may proclaim, uh, proclaim uh, claim it clearly as I should. So yeah, that's uh, the couple of verses that we're going to do today. So um, Ryan, we'll go ahead and pass it over to you. All right. I think it's so cool that this whole like, and I'm in chains part. I have an NIV as well. And it's a, I have NAV and I have Amplified. Do you have Amplified too? Today? No, I don't have Amplified today. Okay, okay. But he's talking about like being in prison. I was looking up some commentary. It says that he's most likely like in a home, in prison in a home. And I, I just like so look up to Paul and his ability to just like, no matter the circumstances, like keep seeking Jesus. Because he's in prison, and he could easily just give in, or just get tired, or, and just coast, or even just, like, have his own little, like, devotion to the Lord there, and, like, forget about the body, and forget about writing letters, but he doesn't, like, he's just charged to, like, continue um, to build up, to continue to want to see the, the church built up, and I, I think that's beautiful, because, like, prison, it, I guess I don't necessarily know all the circumstances that he's going through, but I can imagine that it's no fun at all. Yeah. It, you know, like, who knows what the climate's like? It could be totally cold there. Who knows how much food they're feeding him? They, you know, they could be denying him all these things. Because in prisons, back in the day and in third world countries, like, you have everything taken from you. And it might not be the circumstance here, but he's not free. No, you know, no matter how you look at it, and yet his heart is like to see the church to like continue to grow, and like just want to support the church, which I think is just it's it's just the picture of like fighting the good fight all the way to the end, um, and what and that's what he's doing. And so I like um, that he's just he he even says the word to be focused. So he's like, in, in two in the Amplified, it says, Be persistent and devoted to prayer, being alert and focused in your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. And I think, like, you know, obviously the Lord, like, has given him that revelation, but at the same time, he's kind of modeling, like, this this focus on uh, on the Lord and on prayer. Because, again, like, he's in, he's in chains. Like, but yet he's just like, but I'm focused. Like, I love that. I admire that about believers that are just like, no matter the circumstances, no matter what's going on, like, I'm going to keep seeking the Lord. And whatever that looks like, if they're worshiping or if they're reading their word or if they just keep ministering even though all hell is coming against them, they're just so persistent. And you see that in Paul's life, and I like that. Um, and just this whole, like, into it says, be persistent and devoted to prayer. It's like... It's almost like he's like, hey, you need you need a hobby? Here's one for you. <laughs> like, devotion to prayer, devotion to um, um, intercession even, and being thankful. And, you know, like prayer, prayer is so many things, but I think this one is like kind of pushing towards that like intercessory type prayer. Um, 
And so, you know, we, we know what that is. You know, like, like, that's just like standing in the gap for others and praying on behalf of others. Um, but also, I, I think it's cool that, you know, Paul and, like, good ministers are always leading people back to the Lord. Um, and that's what prayer does. Prayer back brings us right back to Jesus. And, like, as you're praying for whomever it is, like, I love this about prayer. Like, you're praying, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm not just, like, praying to an open building, or I'm not just praying in my closet. Like, God is here. And I love those suddenlies that happen when you're praying. Like, oh. And so I think that's part of his charge here is, like, be alert, be focused in your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. Because, yes, the body of Christ needs it, but also, like, God's there with you. And when you're in prayer, like, and, and when you're actually, when you're in anything, like, it's so easy for you to encounter God. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just, I love that. I also love that, like, he's, he's saying, at the same time, pray for us, too, that God will open a door of opportunity. I like how Paul, like, he recognizes that even though he... And, and Paul probably didn't think much of, who knows, I, I don't really know his mindset, but I don't know if he got all that much of himself, you know, like, oh, I'm Paul, and like, apostles, apostles type thing. But he recognized, like, his need for the body of Christ to pray for him. You know, he wouldn't write that if it was just, like, this token thing. Like, he recognized, like, I need the body of Christ praying for me. And it, it kind of made me think of Acts 12 when... Peter's thrown in prison, like, um, who was it? James had been martyred. Peter's now in prison. And an angel shows up while he's in prison, leads him through a couple doors, and then he comes to him, he's like, oh, I'm alive. Oh, I'm not in prison. And then he goes to the door of, like, where all the believers were, and they were praying. And so it's, it's you know, it's not like an equation, A plus B plus C, but it's almost like, where would a Peter had been if the church hadn't been praying for him at that moment? Come on. Like, God's sovereign, I know that. God can move, and he doesn't need us at all. Like he said, if we keep quiet, the rocks will cry out. Like, if, they don't, if we, he doesn't use our voice, he'll use others. But he, I believe he also, like, prayer is just this amazing place of us partnering with his heart to, oh, God, you want to see Iraq, like, filled with believers? You want them to, like, you want to see, you know, revival spread across that country? What can I do? I can pray. Like, I can j just ask God to do it. And the, it's just fun. We, it's for His glory and our honor. Like, it's our honor to pray. It's our honor to, like, go before the Lord and just ask Him for these things on His heart. Um, because, kind of like we say around here, like, everybody gets to play. Prayer, prayer is this place where everybody gets to play and to see God do things. And so I think it's beautiful. He's sovereign. God can do anything at any time, but many times the way he chooses to move is through us and through our prayer. So I love that. Um, and I love that prayer er, and that Paul recognized his need for them. You know, it's kind of be like if Billy Graham called us up, you know, I know he's not alive anymore, but Billy Graham called us up like God. I want to do this tent meeting in LA and I need you, I need you, please pray, pray, please be praying. And you're like, really? Like, I get to take part in that? Okay, yeah, I'll pray for you. But just this recognition that we need everybody, we need us to all have this um, prayer life is huge. Oh, bam! Yeah, it's really good. Ooh, wow. Like, really good. <laughs> oh, my soft. Oh, my soft. Ooh, that's a sauce. 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 All right. Well, I chose to read out of the uh, New Living Translation. Oh. Had a little bit of time this morning, so I did some deep dive. Yeah. Did some research, a little bit on some stuff. And I don't know, last week we, you know, we kind of hit on some, there was like key words and stuff. And I just had this idea, you know, I'm just going to look at some of the, just some of the key words in, in the verses and just kind of. You know, just see what leaps off at me. And so, you know, I, uh, you know, when you, you start the first, that first word in, in verse 2, it says devote. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to read it. It says, devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Pray for us, too, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning, concerning Christ. That is why I am here in chains. 
pray that I will proclaim this message as I clearly should. Whew, that's just, that's so much right there. It's so good. So that word devote in, in chapter 2, you know, I looked that up. And it, it means like to adhere to, uh, like to have a steadfast attentiveness unto, or to give unremitting care to a thing. And so, so he's, he's saying all of that, like give an unremitting, unrelenting care to pray uh, with an alert mind and a thankful heart. That thankful heart means having an attitude of thanksgiving, where quite literally it's an act of worship under the Lord. Yeah. Uh, that we worship in, in, in that state, that we are so incredibly thankful. And so, um, also to that word pray, you know, or prayer, for example, I've, I've heard it said too that, that prayer is the muscle that moves the hand of God. Mm-hmm. And so, if we don't pray, that I'm not saying that, that that totally hinders God from moving because God is so full of love that He's going to move anyway. Right. But I feel like He is more motivated in certain areas when we pray, especially when we pray strategically to, uh, for a thing. Yeah. Uh, and so it's it's like it highlights certain aspects. Yeah. So it's like He's sovereign and He can move. Yeah. But yet it's like. Mm-hmm. He uses our prayers. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. I mean, it's so awesome that God chooses the ability of our ability to declare and decree a thing. Yeah. Because if you look at it in, Gen- in, in Genesis, you know, what does it say? Let us make man in our own image. Yeah. That means that because God has voice activation power, we have been given that same thing. Oh, so God uses that. It's it's almost like it's it's like this dynamite thing that God's put in us to be able yeah. to to speak a thing, and it and it happens. You yeah. know, uh, I, I mean, in proper context, of course. You know, what, what goes along with with His plans, purposes, and desires. Um, pray for us too that God will give us many opportunities to speak about His mysterious plan concerning Christ. So there's a couple things I want to unpack that I want to talk about there. First, you know, obviously, I mean, think about that. Paul is asking the church to pray for opportunities. Here he is in a ba- here he's he's in chains. He's in prison. He's he's behind bars, all that stuff. It's not like he can go anywhere. No. But it's like but he's praying, God, you know, he's asking these people, pray that God will give me opportunities to be able to Share about Jesus. Yeah. Um, and then it talks about the mysterious plan or the mysteries. In other translations, it talks about the mysteries of Christ. And so that word uh, mystery, it, it, it has a couple different uh, things with it. One, uh, it, it's a, a biblical use of, of mystery, is something that is revealed that was previously hidden. Um, Secret that was hidden during the, maybe during the Old Testament, revealed in the New Testament. Uh, mystery could be something that maybe we as humans we just can't totally comprehend, uh, or or it could be something that God, uh, something about God that cannot be logically understood. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and so I've also heard this too, too that that. This this term mystery when God when there's a, a particular mystery it's it's not that some, not so much that something is uh, that we found something that's hidden it's that it's purposely made hidden for the for the appointed time or the appropriate time mm-hmm. when that mystery will be revealed God has done that He's hidden things in throughout history and so they won't be truly revealed until the proper time and so. This is something that he's talking about when he talks about the, the mysteries of Christ. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, That's really good. Yeah, and then into verse four, it says, "There's that word again, pray." You know, pray. You know, obviously we're asking him. To, he's asking the church to pray, to 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 for the for the hand of God to move mm-hmm. uh, in his circumstances, his situation, and pray that he would be able to proclaim the message. So this. This part, you know, the message, that, that's the mystery. Mm-hmm. Proclaiming that mystery. And then it says to be, uh, to be known. And what that means is to proclaim it 
uh, clearly to, to, to be known, to become known, to be plainly recognizable, mm -hmm. thorough, thoughtfully and thoroughly understood. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what Paul is saying. He's like, you know, he's, he's asking, pray for me, that when I declare the mysteries that God has, that it will be unmistakable that, so, that there's not going to be anyone that's going to be able to listen to it and, and walk away like, well, I wonder what he meant there. Yeah. You know, he's saying, I want everyone to know the simplicity of the gospel, the yeah. simplicity of the mystery that is for now. Yeah. And so that's what I got. Yeah, that's good. Really good. You see anything online? Okay, yeah, go ahead and leave your comments because we want to do this with you all. So, yeah, go ahead and feel free to leave what's, what the Lord's giving you. Yeah. All right, so um, I've got the NIV, and um, yeah, there's just there's a lot of good here. I I love the the idea of being watchful and yeah. thankful. Um, just the like. It gives intent. I think oftentimes we we think that we this. I'll speak for myself. Uh, I can approach prayer in a way that um, that is like I need to do this to check it off the list. Like this is oh, a yeah. part of it, right? Oh, yeah. Like it's just one of those disciplines that I have to do as a Christian, and I don't necessarily want to in this moment but I'm going to you know uh -huh. or whatever uh -huh. but but oh, <laughs> but saying watchful I, I think it just gives like that uh, I think about watch and see what God's going to do like in whatever situation you're praying about or whoever whoever you're praying for or whatever that may be approaching prayer in a way of like of curiosity uh, of okay God what what is kind of, what do you have in store here? And yeah. and even in the good and the bad. I mean, this is coming from you talked a lot about it, but this is coming from Paul in prison, and he's uh, he is approaching it like, okay, God, what what are you going to yeah. do here? Yeah. And and I think that is so good and thankful. I like watchful and thankful yeah. in the midst of all of the stuff like. I, I personally, I mean, I haven't experienced prison, but I have experienced some really hard things. And, and going through the hard and still choosing to be thankful in the hard is, one, extremely difficult. But if you can accomplish that, one, you, you are at a high level of spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. Two, you are going to see things from a vastly different perspective than you would if you didn't, if you weren't thankful. So true. I love how you said that. Yeah, um, that's so true. So, so that's that's one thing. But then I really liked four, and I have a little bit of a story that goes with it. But um, it says, "Pray that I may proclaim it clearly, mm -hmm. as I should." And and I think about as soon as soon as because he's asking for prayer, right? He's asking, guys, I please cover me. But he's also not. He's not asking for selfish prayer. He's yeah, asking yeah. that he could proclaim it. Like yeah. so, it's all about how he's sharing. It's not about pray that I can get out of prison. Yeah, yeah. You don't, like, you don't <laughs> like, see that. That is definitely what I would be like, like asking for prayer for. Or even if I were praying for somebody, praying for a friend, I would definitely be praying for their release. Right. Yeah. But he is pray he is saying, pray that I can proclaim it correctly. Mm -hmm. And and I think about um, I I'm a big camp guy. A lot of you guys know this. Um, but at camp we do these things called night missions. And I've talked about night mi night missions before. But um, oftentimes, uh, so the camp that we run these night missions on um, is an intergenerational camp. So you have. 85 year olds and you have two year olds and babies and all of that and not everybody can help with the night missions but as the youth leader we're always asking for help we we have different roles with the night mission or whatever it may be we're always asking for help and a lot of people will come and ask hey can, how can i help i can't i can't do anything physical how can i 
how can I be a part, or how can I do that? And um, I, one thing that Carissa told me, because Carissa has ran these night missions from, um, I mean, probably since I was in here, let's be honest. Uh, and and she, and so she has designed a lot of these things. And, and what they are, to give you an aspect of it, is um, they are, it's a, it's a game, right? But it's a themed game where you're stepping into a story and you're carrying out the gospel in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, there are all kinds of situations. The easiest one to describe to you is smuggling Bibles into China. So you, as a group, are having to smuggle these Bibles and um, write down and interpret and things like that, these Bibles, and you're trying to avoid the police that are throughout so that is something, and it's at night. So there are a lot of things. One, just general safety, right? I mean, you're running around the woods in camp. Um, there have been multiple injuries, not when I was around, but there have been injuries where people have fallen or tripped over a rock oh, yeah. or something like that. And like, cause you're you're running in in the dark, you know, and oftentimes. You don't have a flashlight because we're trying to make it as real as possible. So there are all kinds of those like tangible like things, but there, are, when you step into a a scenario, an atmosphere, or you create yeah. that scenario or atmosphere, then spiritual warfare is very, very real, um, especially with with people that you are like trying to teach and trying to help through and help to learn and grow. Um, so the, the devil obviously doesn't want that to happen. Yeah. And uh, one of the biggest things that Carissa told me from the get-go is when you're running these night missions, make sure that you personally, she was talking to me, who is the youth leader, like I'm the one running the show, right? She said, make sure that you don't have a role. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? Why, Why wouldn't I? Like, I need to be out and about and doing the things. Plus, it's kind of you. fun. Like, right, yeah. plus it's kind really. of fun. Yeah. But she was like, your number one priority as the youth leader is to cover it in prayer. Mm-hmm. So get all the volunteers you possibly can so you can stay, or you can walk the camp if you want, but you are covering it in prayer. And whoever can't tangibly help, they are praying. So when somebody comes to you and asks you how to how do you how can um, how can I help I can't do anything physical, mm-hmm. you automatically say, hey, can you cover us in prayer? This is what's happening, and um, I can honestly say, uh, even with the little things, like even with the littler events throughout camp or even outside of camp, but let's take it away from camp, even on those littlest of things, if they're not covered in prayer then they don't go as well as they could. Mm-hmm. You walk away and you're like, oh man, God could have really done something here. And, and it just didn't, it didn't yeah. happen. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just, and so I am always asking, and so I can proclaim it correctly, right? Yeah. So I can, so I'm always asking guys, cover this in prayer. Yeah. I've even done that here in the church with, with some people when we're running around in a night mission here in the, in the building. Like, hey, I know you can't run around, but can you please cover it in prayer? Yeah. Um, so that's just a, that's a cool way to kind of, a cool illustration that came to mind. Um, but I just love how unselfish that, that prayer uh, that he's asking for is. So, yeah, that's, those are the things that kind of stuck out to me today. So That's good. I love that. That's a rabbit trap, but I love that. You're, you're playing a game in the church and you're asking for covering against spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. It's like, because everything we do is, like, important. Like, mm-hmm. these kids are going to learn and they're going to, like, they're going to catch the heart of God as they're doing this. And it wouldn't be my first thought to cover that in prayer. I love that. That's what you told me to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So effective. Prayer is so oh, essential yeah. to And I, some of the things that I've do. seen when when we have covered it in prayer really, really well, are just mind-boggling. Yeah. Like, it is just so cool. Um, yeah. So, yeah. That's good. That's cool. That's good. And yeah. also, when people preach the gospel clearly. Like, yeah. 
man, when you hear somebody like present the gospel, it's super clear. I love just watching people like on the edge of their seats going, mm-hmm. just give me more. So yeah. I just want more. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. I think that's what he's praying for. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. I don't, think uh, we, I don't think we're getting anything. Facebook? Okay. No, I'm not seeing anything on Facebook. Our Facebookers are all hanging out in the mild weather. Because it is getting a little nicer around it's here. True. It needs to get a little bit warmer. Okay. Yeah. Maybe not. There's yeah. nothing on YouTube. Yeah, I don't okay. see anything on YouTube. Either. All right. Well, yeah. Um, what do we got going on? We've got uh, tonight is the first. No, it's the second. I was gone last week. It's the second night. We don't have family night. Yeah. No. No. There isn't any family programming night. this evening. Um, and then tomorrow night, there's uh, the Through the Bible Bible study. Um, and then Friday's Friday Night Fire. You. Um, oh, also thir- Thursday mornings, the women meet. Um, yes. I think they're still meeting. Yep, they are. I'm pretty sure. They finished The Chosen. I might be wrong. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, so usually Thursday mornings, Thursday nights, uh, Through the Bible, Friday... Friday Night Fire, and then um, Sunday. Who leads that ministry of the women? Is there a particular... Barbaris. 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 Yeah. So if you have any She's questions about tomorrow morning, there you go. that would be your contact person right there. Yeah, there you go. Yep. So, yeah. women's retreat next week. Oh, yes. Oh, so the yeah. the rummage sale next week. Yeah, yeah. So if you're doing spring cleaning, bring us any of your stuff. Unless Ooh. it's like stuff that's going to go in the free box. But anything worth selling, we're going to sell it for you. And all the proceeds are going to go towards either Ecuador Mission Strip or Rosebud Mission Strip. So, yeah. Awesome. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's really cool. So. Softball. Uh, okay. Yeah, softball, softball starts tomorrow. Softball tomorrow yeah. night. Opening night. So, opening 6.30 night. and 7.30. Yeah, field or E and field F, I think. Yeah. So Over at Sherman Park. There. Sherman Park, yep. yep. Which is right by... The zoo. The zoo. North of the there zoo. How about the zoo? Battleship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Between the zoo and the battleship. And honestly, there's things to do for everybody. Like, it's a good time for uh, families to hang out and talk. Mm-hmm. And there's a little playground for kids. Um, so, yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, with that, uh, man, I, we should pray. We should pray. Been talking about it. Yeah, we'll do it. yeah. We just we thank you for today. We thank yeah, you for awesome. this awesome team and this awesome yeah. place. Uh, just uh, we pray for um, Brent as he is traveling that that he proclaim it clearly. Come on, God. We just yeah. we thank you for Brent and we thank you for his leadership here. Yes. And um, we just ask that you bless him. Uh, and we just we also lift up Chris and uh, just dealing with uh, just some sickness at home and, and God just continue to help him clear things up as as he progresses throughout this week and just be with him and, um, I know he's a little bit stir crazy so just uh, you know, just help him to find the things to do to keep him busy yes, and uh, just be with him God and we just thank you um, we thank you for this time, this conversation uh, where we can come and we can lean into whatever you have in store that day um, and today was prayer, and, and we just we thank you for that, God. We thank you for Paul's example um, that we get to dig into and, and talk with each other about. And, uh, we also pray for the family and just everything that everybody's going on, Come on. going yes, through this so. week, and I uh, just ask that you be with them um, and love on them, and, and hopefully they get just a word uh, mm-hmm. from from today or from anything, God, that they just see you wherever they're at right now. Yeah, come on. Uh, we just thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I got this. You know, I got this picture of somebody like it was. Oh, oh, I think it's Jeremiah that like was put in a cistern and then put underground. Um, but I just saw like this person in like in, like a jail cell underground. But I saw it like coming up. Um, and so I feel like the Lord's just saying, if you feel like you're stuck, if you feel like you are just like in this pit that you can't get up, can't get out of, He is there, and He is pulling you out of it. Like, get ready for it to go from ashes to beauty. Um, he's there. He's with you. And I know you feel it, and I know it's no fun, and you're going, where are you, God? But He's right there, and He's going to get you out. So. 
Awesome. Cool. Awesome. All righty. Well, uh, with that, um, we'll go ahead and let you guys go. So, um, in Brent's words, go out and keep giving them. <laughs>